Hi everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to go through the exercise of getting Windows Server ready to be an iSCSI target. I've already connected into the school vSphere infrastructure, not the one that you created that's nested. And we're here because we need to make some changes to our infrastructure slash Jumpbox VM. So I've got that selected. I will edit settings. What I'm going to do is add four disks that we're going to use as the iSCSI storage. So I'll say add a new device. This is going to be a hard disk and it's going to be 40 gigabytes in size. I'll do that three more times. Change each one of these to 40 gigabytes. And I'm also going to thin provision all of them. The other thing that I need to do is add another network adapter as well. So we'll do that. And this is not going to be on my 01 network, it's going to be on my 02 network. That will be that one. OK. And we're set. We'll say OK for that, wait for it to reconfigure. That is done, and that's the last thing that we need to do here. Okay, we're over in Server Manager on our infrastructure slash Jumpbox VM connected there via RDP. Going to expand out file and storage services. I'm going to start off looking at disks. And we can see that our four new disks are here and those are offline. So we need to bring those online and initialize them. Okay, so they're all online, time to initialize. Okay, so that's finished. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a storage pool out of those four disks. In the storage pools, we're going to create a new one. Just right click, new storage pool. Wants to know the name. So we'll give it the name. We need to know what disks are going to be included, which will be all four of the new ones. And we will create that. Excellent. So that's done. So here's our new pool. We'll select that. And we can see that we don't have any virtual disks. So I will say that I want to create one. I'm going to use the pool. We'll give this a label. We're not going to create storage tiers. We are not going to configure enclosure awareness. We are going to configure with parity. And this is going to be thin provisioning. Size is going to be 120 gigabytes. And we will create. Okay, that's finished. Excellent. We do need to configure a volume and it's already checked to create a volume. So we'll say go ahead and do that. And we're going to create the volume from that disk that we just created. The size is going to be 120 gigabytes. We'll consume the whole thing. Drive loader is going to be E, which is perfect. And we're going to label this 
shared storage, next and create. And that will wrap up in a second and there we go. So we've now got that uh, set up and configured. Next thing we need to do is look at configuring the network adapter. I'm going to click back on local. And here is my production adapter from before. I'm going to change to a new one. First thing we'll do is rename this. Call it storage. And we need to configure IP. This is going to be manual. We'll put in our IP address. There's no default gateway or DNS. Go ahead and configure that. Excellent. Next part, setting up iSCSI. First thing we need to do is add the iSCSI target service. Going to add roles and features. This is going to be part of file and storage services. Expand that, expand that, and select from the list by SCSI target server. Next, no features. This is not going to require a restart. We'll do install and we'll just give that a minute until it finishes. Okay, that's done. Close this out. And we will go and configure our first target. Back to file and storage services. In this case, we're going to click on iSCSI. And we need to first start by creating an iSCSI virtual disk. Click on that. Where are we going to create that? That's going to be on our E drive. We'll select that. Click next. We have to give it a name. So this is going to be virtual disk VD-101. Click next. How big is it going to be? 10 gigabytes. We want to make sure this is dynamically expanding, same as thin provisioning in the VMware world. This is going to be a new target. So this is going to be TG-101. And we have to specify the initiators that are going to be allowed to connect. So we're going to manually specify the initiator addresses of our two ESXi hosts. I'm going to add this in. Now we have not configured this yet, so I'm going to be entering in the information that I know it's going to be configured as. It's going to be an IQN. We're going to specify the value of this. Now this name is incredibly important to have the correct information typed in. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. And the most common cause of failures with connecting to your iSCSI target from ESXi is that you don't have the name of the target correct or the name of the initiator correct. So for everyone, this is going to be iqn.2008-01.com.vmware colon. And then after that is going to be the name of your ESXi host. It's incredibly important to make sure it's the name of your ESXi host, not mine. So if you don't remember what that is, go back into vCenter and look at what those host names are. Once we finish this, I'll just click OK. Uh, we need to add one for the second host as well, so I'll do that. Okay, that's done. Those two are in. And we'll click on Next. We are not going to enable authentication whereby the host and the iSCSI server have to uh, authenticate with each other. And we'll say go ahead and create that. And that is now done, which is excellent. And the last thing we need to do is make sure the LUN number is configured correctly. So I'm going to bring up the properties of 
the iSCSI virtual disk. You can see down here that the logical unit number is zero. Microsoft, for whatever, just leaves them all at zero. It does not assign one values. I'm going to assign one. We'll say OK. And that is now fixed. So will this work if you don't assign a LUN number? Yeah, it will, but it makes it very difficult on the initiator side to see what you're connecting to because those LUN numbers are the easiest things to identify the different ones. And that is basically a wrap for the video. Don't forget that you have uh, three other iSCSI targets that you have to create yet. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and we'll see you next time.